everyone, my name's Catherine. I'm the Access Officer for the Physics Department here at the University of Oxford. And today I'm going to be going through question 21 from the 2012 PAP paper, which is this question here. Um, as ever, uh, you may want to take these answers with a pinch of salt. These are my ways of understanding this question and the way that I would solve it. Um, so let's have a look at what we've got. Question 21 says, a meteoroid of mass M is on a circular Earth orbit of radius R, which is a few, i.e. more than two times larger than the radius of the Earth RE. Derive an expression for the meteoroid's speed. State the meanings of all symbols used. OK, let's have a look at this first part first, and then we'll look at the second part second. So we've got a uh, meteoroid on a circular orbit at radius r, um, and we're looking for an expression for the meteoroid's speed. So uh, let's have this as part a. Um, right, so we've got uh, our meteoroid. The force on the meteoroid is going to be the force due to gravity. So that is going to be given by g m m over r squared. We're told that r is the um, the radius of the orbit of the meteoroid um, and we know Newton's second law f equals ma so that equals m times the acceleration. Now the acceleration here is the centripetal acceleration so that's the acceleration of the uh, orbiting body towards the centre of the earth um, and that is given by uh, a equals v squared over r. So our expression it becomes mv squared over r. Uh, now we can see there are going to be various things to cancel here. Uh, so the mass of the meteoroid will cancel. Uh, one of the radii uh, will cancel, giving us an expression for... Uh, the speed squared, so gm over r equals v squared, so v equals the square root of gm over r. Now it has said uh, particularly state the meanings of all the symbols used, so we'd better do that. So uh, v is the uh, speed of the meteoroid, Then we've got uh, big G. Big G is the gravitational constant. Then we've got big M, which is the mass of the Earth. And R was given to us in the question, so we'll leave that one there. So that was part one. OK, let's have a look at part two. Now this looks quite big so we'll break it down a bit uh, but before we do we are going to read the whole thing to see if it helps us build a picture of what we're aiming for so another meteoroid of the same mass is on the same orbit uh, okay interesting so it has the same mass and the same orbit and it's in the same plane but rotating in the opposite direction so we've got two meteoroids, they're both going around the Earth, but they're going in the same orbit, the same plane, but opposite directions, so they're going to go round like that. Uh, at an azimuthal angle uh, phi zero, see the figure below, the two meteoroids collide head on and coalesce or combine. Okay, so we've got our two meteoroids going round, then crashing into one another and coalescing. Sketch the complete trajectory of the newly formed double mass meteoroid showing how the azimuthal angle uh, phi depends on the distance r. Sketch also its kinetic energy and expected meteoroid surface temperature as a function of little r. So this distance little r is going to be the distance from uh, the centre of the earth which is interesting. So this is suggesting that the surface temperature is going to change as a function of R, i.e. Let's think about what's going to happen here. Our two meteoroids are going to collide with one another. Then actually we would expect them 
to because they're on the same orbit same speed same mass so same momentum equal and opposite momentum when they collide would imply that by conservation of momentum the uh conservation of angular momentum specifically it no longer has any angular momentum our uh, uh coalesce our combined meteoroid so it's not going to orbit anymore so if it's not going to orbit anymore what's going to happen well if you think about it, what you'd expect to happen is if you put something stationary at a distance from a massive object like the Earth, then it would fall into the Earth. OK, and that would make sense of the question then, uh, it asking us about uh, the meteoroid surface temperature, because as it falls in through the atmosphere, we'd expect it to heat up. Um, finally, give a very brief explanation of why you expect the temperature to depend on R in that way. OK, uh, for R is less than two times the radius of the Earth, effects due to Earth's atmosphere cannot be neglected. R is the distance from the Earth's centre. So let's split this up into the different questions. So we've got uh, one thing where we're going to have to sketch the complete trajectory of the newly formed double mass, showing how the azimuthal angle depends on the distance. We're going to have to sketch its... Uh, kinetic energy and the expected meteoroid surface temperature and then we're going to have to give a very brief explanation. Okay so we've got three sketches because this second sketch wants the kinetic energy and the uh, surface temperature and then some explanations. So let's start. By sketching the complete trajectory of the newly formed double mass meteoroid showing how the azimuthal angle depends on the distance r. So that's our two axes. We've got azimuthal angle, we've got distance r from the centre of the Earth. So uh, this was our this is the, the figure we get given in the question. So our um, collision is happening at some angle uh, phi zero and they are starting out at a distance r from the centre of the Earth. So what have we got? We've got a trajectory showing how azimuthal angle depends on distance r. So let's go for um, so this is our angle phi and this is our distance r. So they're going to start out at a distance uh, are and what we're expecting to happen is we're expecting them to crash down into the surface of the earth when they hit the surface of the earth they're going to stop um, and we know that the original orbit r is a few times larger than the radius of the earth r e so that would put r e somewhere down here and we know that all of this happens at uh, the uh, azimuthal angle uh, phi zero. So the uh, we're only sketching the uh, trajectory of the newly formed double mass meteoroid. We're not sketching the original meteoroids, the two separate ones that go round. So that only exists uh, at a distance, at a, uh, an azimuthal angle phi zero. And so it, it comes into existence at a distance r and then it will simply drop to a distance r e. Uh, so let's put some dashed lines on to show uh, exactly what we're expecting to happen but that's it it's going to it's not going to change angle again it's going to stay at the same azimuthal angle but it's going to change radius. All right, that was the first part done. So that was sketch the complete trajectory of the newly formed double mass meteoroid showing how the azimuthal angle depends on the distance r. Sorted. Next, sketch also its kinetic energy and expected meteoroid surface temperature as a function of r. Okay, so let's start with the kinetic energy. Um, what do we expect to happen here? Well, the kinetic energy, kinetic energy always depends on v squared. Uh, e k is proportional to v squared, it's half mv squared. And we wrote an expression for v in the first part. 
v equals square root of gm over r, or indeed v squared equals gm over r. So if the kinetic energy is going as v squared, that means it is proportional to gm over r. Um, or rather, in this case, because r is changing, we shouldn't be using capital R, which is our fixed radius. Uh, that would be our initial kinetic energy. But actually what we're going to go for is that our kinetic energy is proportional to 1 over the general radius R. Okay. So if our kinetic energy is going as 1 over R, that will give us the uh, basic shape for it. So we'd expect something like uh, EK um, and R, and we'd expect it to look like a 1 over R, so something like that perhaps, um, until it crashes into the uh, surface of the Earth. Uh, so that would be the radius of the Earth there. However, we've been told that we can only ignore the effects of the atmosphere of the Earth up to a distance of 2 RE which is what somewhere here, um, two times the radius of the Earth. So at that point, we wouldn't expect the speed to keep following this relationship of gm over r. We are going to get air resistance, so it's going to slow down. Um, and it may well slow down to its terminal velocity uh, because of the air resistance that it's facing. So actually what we would expect to happen for our kinetic energy is that instead of it uh, finishing off somewhere, tailing off up here, we'd expect it to change direction and uh, level off as the speed levels off. So what is that going to give us? That's going to give us our, if we plot our kinetic energy against our radius, um, and we start at a high radius and we finish at the uh, radius of the Earth, but we've also, we know we're going to have to pay attention to uh, the atmospheric effects at 2 RE. And let's suppose that uh, our initial radius R was somewhere over here. So, the kinetic energy of our combined meteoroid was initially zero, because it's not going anywhere. And then it gradually falls in and speeds up. Uh, so. Let's just mark that dotted line in there. So what we'd expect to see is something like a 1 over r shape up until the point at which we hit our atmosphere and then at a, our atmosphere it will slow down and reach a terminal velocity. Okay, so let's mark that on as E, K, max. Um, so ek max uh, is maximum kinetic energy due to uh, reaching the terminal velocity. And we also have um, air resistance due to, well, air resistance due to atmosphere between uh, 2 RE and RE. Okay, so that's our sketch of the kinetic energy. Then the next part of the question asked for a sketch of the expected meteoroid surface temperature as a function of r. So we're still thinking about the same thing, what happens to our meteoroid as it falls, but this time we're thinking about how hot it gets. So intuitively what would we expect to happen? We'd expect the temperature to stay the same while there's no atmosphere because there's no, no reason, there's nothing to heat it up. But as it enters the atmosphere we expect it to start to warm up. Um, do we expect it to just keep warming up? Will it warm up forever? If you put something, if something's falling through the atmosphere, will it just keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter? Um, well, anything that you, any solid that you heat up, uh, 
will at some point change its state. So as the meteoroid starts to melt, we would expect its temperature to plateau. Um, and so we wouldn't expect it to keep going up, we'd expect it to tail off. Uh, as it passes through the atmosphere and it heats up and uh, it starts to melt. So what is that gonna look like on a sketch? Uh, so if we have the uh, temperature and we have the uh, radius r, so we're gonna start out at um, our distance, our original distance r, uh, we're going to start out uh, we've also got the uh, point where the atmosphere begins or where we have to start paying attention to it and we've got the surface of the earth and again let me just put some dotted lines in so that i can uh, see where we're going on this plot uh, so we are going to start with some finite temperature um, and then we are going to uh, stay at that temperature until we reach the atmosphere then we're going to warm up and then we're going to uh, saturate we're going to reach a, a our melting point so uh, let's draw that in we're going to start with a fixed temperature it's going to stay the same then we're going to start warming and then we're going to start melting there okay so uh Let's mark some points on here. So we have Tm for our melting point and maybe we'll call this Ti, its initial temperature. Uh, so Tm, melting point, of the meteoroid. Uh, Ti, initial temperature of meteoroid. And the question did ask us to do one more thing. It asked us to uh, give a very brief explanation of why you expect the temperature to depend on R in that way. So we've talked about that, but let's just very briefly write something down. Um, so we'd expect the temperature to remain constant until we have to take uh, the atmosphere into account until atmosphere reached then heating but saturates uh, as the meteoroid begins to melt. And there we go. That is our answer for question 21. And very appropriately, Helena is going to be looking at question 22 next time. So I hope you can join us there. Thanks everyone.